enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed and Pasquale. When Luigi Basco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write and tell her about his adventure. So now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes to Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, this is the first letter I'm going to write to you in 1950. Happy New Year, Mamma Mia. 1950. Seems like yesterday I'm a get off a boat in New York and a man has assaulted me the Chrysler building. <laughs> Later, when I'm a told this to Pasquale, he was a get a very mad at me. He said it was a bad to buy real estate when the prices is a going down. <laughs> anyway, I... Hello, Mr. Basco. Letter for you. Oh, thanks, Mr. Mailman. Hey, is it from my mom? Yes. She sent an email this time. Well, it must have been important. Maybe Uncle Pietro's a goat is finally got the man. <laughs> well, so long, Mr. Basco. Yeah, goodbye. Dear son Luigi, thanks for all those nice Christmas presents. Aunt Margarita thanks you for a glass of coffee maker, which she's a broke yesterday. <laughs> Cousin Maria thanks you for nice perfume, which a cat is a spill all over him, son. <laughs> Luigi, that the cat is a smell so nice, and now all the mice they come to him. <laughs> also, Uncle Pietro is to say thank you very much for that very fancy American coat to hang her. But the Luigi, Uncle Pietro, is a got to no coat. <laughs> Oh, would it break you heart if you could see him go to work at this cold winter morning? Or he's got to wear his shirt, the jacket, and a hot water bottle. <laughs> Luigi, maybe you know some rich millionaire who's got an extra overcoat that would fit, fit to you, Uncle Pietro. He's a wear size 36 or size 38. Even a 40. <laughs> And if you know somebody who's got a 42, 44, take <laughs> off. <laughs> then Uncle Pietro could also cover the goat. <laughs> I'm a hope that this letter is to find you healthy and happy in America. And more, Mom. Poor Uncle Pietro. If I only had a summer coat, I could have sent to him. Wait, maybe there's somebody in my head school of class who's a got. I'm going to go there right to now and ask. Quiet, class. Quiet, please. That's good. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basto? Here. Mr. Harwick? Here. Mr. Olson? Yes. Mr. Schultz? Guilty. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, what do you mean, guilty? I didn't do my homework. <laughs> but please, Miss Spalding, you've got to excuse me. It's the fifth time this year. Well, naturally, this is the first school day of the new year. Oh, what a coincidence. <laughs> oh, thank you, fellow boobers. <laughs> oh, never mind that, Mr. Schultz. Now, class, today our lesson is on spelling, and we are going to review the rules for forming plurals. Now, we all know that one of a thing is called the singular. Now, Mr. Horowitz, if there are two, it's called... Marriage. <laughs> uh, no, Mr. Horowitz, we're talking about plurals. Could you tell me the plural of the word mouse? With pleasure. Mice. Mice, that's good. Not in my house. <laughs> Quiet, please. Mr. Schultz, since you're so anxious to talk, answer these questions. Now, what is the plural of deer? A deer. Sheep. Sheep. Swine. Swine. 
<laughs> Mr. Schultz got all three wrong. Why? To tell the truth, I was leaving myself for the jackpot crash. <laughs> <laughs> That is not so funny. Now, Mr. Basco, you may tell us the plurals of deer, sheep, and swine. Huh? Tell us the plurals of deer, sheep, and swine. Huh? <laughs> oh, animals. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking about number. Size of 36 to 38 to 42. <laughs> Tabasco, what are you talking about? Uncle Pietro, he's a call, do you see? Mr. Tabasco, not now. Uh, Miss Spaulding, if you wish, I would be overjoyed to give you the rule for the plural. Miss Spaulding, you know how dependable I am. Always with the information on the tip of my tongue. Oh, listen, why don't you sneeze and bite off your brain? <laughs> Benjamin, you, 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 the simple spelling rule covering the plural says that when the singular ends in a sound with which F cannot unite in pronunciation, but must form a separate syllable, E is inserted before S in forming the plural, unless the word ends with a silent E, which then forms a separate syllable with the S. Now, short. What can be simpler than that? For one thing, Einstein's theory of relativity. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Olsen, you quoted that rule perfectly. Now, let us see if the class has learned anything. Mr. Basco, can you give us an example? Huh? <laughs> give us an example. Huh. Two and a two is a four. Uh, now, there's a man we can all understand. <laughs> Mr. Basco, have you studied your lesson for today? Oh, yes, sir, Miss Spalding, but when I'm a keep it thinking about the, what the, my mom is right to me about Uncle Pietro, I usually need overcoat to keep him warm this winter. And I'm a got the nuts in it to send him. Oh, wow. Oh, that's yeah, the yeah, same, yeah, Mr. Basco. Wait, wait, Luigi. I got an old overcoat for you. Oh, thanks, Harowitz. Oh, wait, I forgot. It's filled with mop holes. <laughs> that's all right. I'm a sort up. Also, the buttons are missing. Well, I'm going to show that up, too. Oh, I just remembered. My wife's brother is wearing the coat. Him we can't throw up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Luigi, I have an idea that you're the Jim Dandy. <laughs> Why don't you go to the Salvation Army? Yes, that might be fine, Mr. Basco. You know, it's a very worthwhile organization. Well, it's worth a try. Look, stop. Don't do it, Luigi. You're better off to go to Pasquale's than the Salvation Army. So, so what do you mean? When I first came here, I went to the Salvation Army. I went inside for a meal. And in ten minutes, I was wearing a uniform, swinging a tambourine, beating a drum, and singing, Your mother still wait for you, Chuck. <laughs> Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Uh, Pasquale, I'm going to ask you a big favor about the something. Is it no rush, you little banana nose? <laughs> hey, sit down by this table. The best of them I forget it, Paris. Maybe you want I should bring you out of some pizza? Uh, no, no thanks, Sir Pasquale. Some spaghetti? Is it delicious? No thanks, Sir Pasquale. Then how's about it, some lasagna? Mmm. Tasted like it was made in heaven. No, no, no. I know. A beautiful filet mignon steak with a French fried potatoes is just a melt into your mouth. That I'll have. That I ain't got. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I'll have the lasagna. I ain't got that either. <laughs> don't know why you're asking me if I'm a want to. Just to try to be sociable, a little pumpkin head. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Pasquale. But with all this talk about food, I'm a fool already. What I'm really coming here for is a favor. Pasquale, you see my Uncle Pietro? He's got no warm clothes and I'm like it very much. Luigi, go no further. Come with me in the back of the store. Oh, you're a lucky fellow, Luigi. You got a nice and rich friend like a Pasquale. <laughs> I'm always a flash. Clothes, money, stocks, bonds, all the four. 
Egyszer eltöpp a szkali, you biggest a fat lassan, I know. That's a funny thing. When I'm saying it, it's come out a different. <laughs> well, Louise, you answer my wardrobe. Now close your eyes, and when you open up, are you going to see a sight you never saw before? Mamma mia. It's looking like a whole department store. <laughs> That's right. Feel that coat over there. That's really suspensive. It's what they call a camel's hair. Camel's hair? You mean that they make a coat from a camel? Sure. What do you think? Do they make only cigarettes? <laughs> Make coats from lots of animals. Beavers, muckrats, minxes, and they make suits from fishes, too. Fishes? Sure. Didn't you ever hear a shark skin? <laughs> and, and look, look, Luigi, look at that suit over there. That's a herring bone. Oh, Mamma mia, there's so much to learn. Sure. Just look at this coat, Luigi. All the camels are hair. Pasquale, maybe you think I'm a stupid. But it's the first time I've found out the camels is they got a button. <laughs> Look, Luigi, is it 23 suits and a coats in this closet? I'm no greedy. For your uncle Pietro, take any one you want. Oh, Pasquale, you're so kind. I, I'm going to take this camels a coat. You're really a good man. That's all right, Luigi. I'm glad to do your favor. Thank yeah. you, Pasquale. Luigi. I did you a favor. Now maybe you're going to do me a little favor. <laughs> sure, Pasquale. What the favor you want? <laughs> Marry my daughter, Rosa. Well, Luigi, what do you say? Tamala gets the back in the closet. <laughs> And now, for the second act of Luigi Basco's Adventures in Chicago, we turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. Hello, so, Mamma Mia. I'm very sorry to write to you. I'm still got an overcoat to send Uncle Pietro. I'm looked in my closet closet, but the Mamma Mia, what's the use to look? If a moth was trapped in my closet, he would have starved to death. <laughs> Poor Uncle Pietro. That's the kindest man that ever lived. Remember when I was a little boy, Mamma Mia? I was nothing to eat in a house. Papa was had no money. We was starving. Suddenly, in as walked Uncle Pietro with the two chickens. There we was a sitting around the table. You, me, Papa, Uncle Pietro, and the two hungry chickens. <laughs> Uncle Pietro is no had the heart to kill them. So it look like a bad news. Luigi, my fellow boobie. Hello, sir. Oh, Luigi, you look so beat, like a real poop cop. <laughs> the smile, be like my coffee pot. Pick up. <laughs> what am I talking about? Coffee is a dollar a pound. <laughs> sure, some ask Pasquale for a coat, but he's said they're not going to do it unless I'm a Mary Rosa. Oh, that Pasquale. Anything he gives away ain't got strings attached. It's got a noose. <laughs> <laughs> Just what did he say, Luigi? Well, uh, he just said, if I'm a married or say, he's uh, given me one uh, of a 23 clothes. Uh, anyone. Even a minxes or with a buttons and a fishes that's to make a suit uh, from a little herons. <laughs> oh, Luigi, are you for shimmer? <laughs> but a shirt, so what am I going to do? Well, Luigi, you could go to a pawn shop dealer. On a shop dealer, what's that? He's a fellow what makes a living from people who are broke. 
yeah, yeah. In, in, in other words, he lives on the flat of the land. <laughs> Sure, so you think there's a pot of shop the fellas are going to sell me coats? Why not? How much money you got to spend, Luigi? Three dollars. Yeah. Himmel, three dollars? <laughs> but it's just that three dollars enough to buy all the overcoats? For three dollars, you couldn't buy an old sweatshirt. <laughs> no, wait, wait, Luigi. Into my head, an idea just pooped. <laughs> those pawnbrokers, they make a lot of money on those old coats, you know. Uh -huh. Why don't you go out and buy one the same as they do? But the house should... You go around in backyards uh -huh. and you holler, I cash, I cash clothes, any old clothes. Now, Luigi, let me hear you say that. I cash the clothes, any old clothes. Should sit down and what are the people that do? They throw down milk bottles. <laughs> Oh, smile, Luigi. I'm going to try to cheer you up. From the whole neighborhood, somebody is bound to have one old coat he wants to get rid of, and there you are. Oh, sure, so you really like the same. Sure, and twice as sweet. <laughs> well, Luigi, I got to go now. Goodbye, and cheer up. Remember, be like me, always smiling, happy, laughing. <laughs> oh. oh, my rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> All the clothes, I'm a cashier. I'm a cashier, all the clothes. Luigi, what are you celebrating about? The New Year's was a three days ago. <laughs> but, sorry, I'm a don't need your help. But sure, is just to give me a wonderful idea. Oh, fine a thing. You listen to that delicate test of the man of Schultz. So what is that going to get you? Nothing. He's got a lesser brains in his little finger than I got in my whole head. <laughs> Luigi, look, why you don't stop with this crazy clothes of business? Always are you looking to help for somebody else. Help yourself for a change. But, Pasquale, remember what they say. It's more blessed to give it than to receive it. Sure, if you're a price fighter. <laughs> look, Luigi, I'm still willing to help you out. I got a 23 garments just itching to jump on you, Uncle Pietro's back. All you got to do is marry Rosa. What do you say? No. Please, Luigi, just the one. No. <laughs> Be sensible. I'm just to told Rosa she should do anything to make you happy. You can't be alone all of your life. Even the lone arrangers you got as a horse. <laughs> so why don't you marry Rosa? That's quite I don't want a horse. <laughs> Luigi, I... Please, please, I'm not gonna go now. But a Oh, so he's a walk out out of me, eh? Gonna go around to buying an old coat. Oh, if there was only some way I... Oh, 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 I think I know just how to fix that little pup of squeak. I gotta call the city hall to fix him good. Hello? Hello, give me the business and license department. I teach him to turn down on my rosa. Hello, license department. That certain fella named Luigi Bosco is going around the Holstead Street neighborhood buying all the clothes without a license. Is it? That's a very bad, eh? You going to send out an inspector? Good. Now we see who's going to have the last to laugh. By the time Luigi gets it through, he's going to be happy to settle for any license. Maybe even a marriage you like to... I'm a cashier. All the clothes are I'm a cashier. Mm, she missed me. <laughs> well, Uncle Pietro is still in need of that to court there. I'm a cashier. Call the clothes. Hey, look, mister, what do you want? Trouble? No, lady, overcoat. You want me to call a cop? You think he's a got the one? Hey, <laughs> get up. I'm a cashier. Call the clothes. I'm a cashier. Um... 
Mamma mia, nobody's answer. Maybe I'm a trading in the door to see what's happening. Please, Mr. Maybe you Look, Bud, if it's vacuum cleaners, we got one. Magazines I don't read. I got no dough for any charity, and I don't want a chance on a raffle. So what do you want? Huh? I'm wearing all the clothes you got there. Yeah, and I'm wearing them. <laughs> Please, I'm a pet cashier. Maybe you got something in the old in the house? Yeah, I have. My mother-in-law, but she's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I don't bother me. Please, I'm a cash please. Uh... Hey, bud. <laughs> huh? You, you, come here. Want to buy a coat? Sure. I got just the one for you. This is a great buy. This coat is hot. Good, my Uncle Pietro, he can use the hot coat. <laughs> it's fine. Does it cost, uh, does it cost too much money? Believe me, it's a steal. Oh, I don't want anything, that's a steal. <laughs> hey, look, Buster, save the jokes, will you? This coat is hot, but it ain't stolen. I got it from a fence. From a fence? Well, sure, sure. I get plenty of stuff off on this fence. <laughs> you lucky. I'm a past a hundred in the back of yards, and I'm going to see one of on any fence. <laughs> Look, I ain't got no time to stand around here chewing a rag. What? Chewing the rag. What's the matter? You got a toothache? <laughs> hey, look, you want to buy this coat or not? Please, I don't want it very much to buy this coat. How much do you want to for it? Three saw bucks. Three saw bucks are good. I'm a buy. It's a deal. Here's the coat. And thank you. Here's the three bucks. Please, you saw them yourself. <laughs> Hey, stop this, wise guy. Three saw bucks is thirty dollars. Don't you want to stand English? Sure, but I'm a guess that maybe was about to went to two different night to schools. <laughs> All right, what do you say? I ain't gonna argue. You got the thirty dollars? What? Wait, please. I'm I'm a like to buy, but a thirty dollars. What's the matter? Ain't the coat worth it? Sure, it's a beautiful coat. Soft, warm, a nice lining. Big pockets. Hey, how's it possible a coat should have such a big pocket? Well, the guy who owned this coat used to pack his rods there. Pack his rods? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Mamma mia, what a funny place to hang the curtain. <laughs> All right, look, break it up, Mac. You don't want to buy. You know what? You wouldn't want a thirty dollars for the coat? Then? Check. Oh, you take a check, huh? <laughs> no, strictly cash. You mean you mean real money? Check. That's what I said. <laughs> Why did I ever apply for a parole? <laughs> Come on, will you hand back the coat? Hey, well, hey. You buying old clothes? Yeah. I'm a city license inspector. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, license? Well, I uh, hope that you two gentlemen will excuse. I am due to deliver a lecture at the YMCA. Oh, wait a minute. You're Luigi Basco, aren't you? Yeah, that's me, yes. Did you buy this coat from that man? Not yet. Well, good. Before you do any more of this buying, you'll have to get a license. Well, then, uh, then I can go, Inspector? Sure. Well, thank you, Inspector. It gives me a deep sense of gratification to know that we've got people like you protecting us honest, law-abiding citizens. <laughs> good day, gentlemen. <laughs> Well, I see you come back without a coat. What's the matter? You having a trouble, little pumpkin head? That's <laughs> well, please. I'm having so much trouble, I'm going to forget everything. Ah, uh, you want to forget, huh? Luigi, how can you forget my 23 pieces of clothes are hanging in the closet and you, Uncle Pietro, freezing to death? What? Don't forget those winters in Italy, Luigi. They're mean. Worse than in California. <laughs> Maybe right to now, just because of your stubbornness, your Uncle Pietro is laying in a single bed 
with a double pneumonia. Please, <laughs> please, Pasquale. Luigi, look, I'm not asking you to make this a bigger sacrifice for my daughter Rosa. It's a, for your own a frostbitten flesh and a blood. <laughs> because of you, everybody's a probably calling him a Uncle Pietro the Human Popsicle. <laughs> I just think of that picture. You must stop, Pasquale, please. I'm, I can't face it. Then I call in a Rosa. I can't face it that either. <laughs> Luigi, you've got your choice. Uncle Pietro or Rosa? That's right. Is a frost or a fat? <laughs> All right, the Pasquale, call her in. That's what I like, a uh, weakling. Rosa! 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 Call me, Papa! <laughs> yes, my little pie face. Rosa, say hello to Luigi. <laughs> Hello, Rosa. Rosa, I've got good news for you. Luigi's just asking me to be his father-in-law. You know what that's going to make you? His mother-in-law. Oh, shut up your face. Luigi, you're never going to be sorry with her. Only yesterday I must say to her, Rosa, you do everything possible to make Luigi happy. And I said I'd do anything, Papa. <laughs> Luigi, kiss me. All right, all right, Luigi. Come here, Luigi. Don't run away. Come here. Look, my boy, we're going to go to my closet closet and you pick out any coat that you want, even the camel's hair. I'm open up in the closet. <laughs> yeah. Where's the coats or the suits? The closet's empty. Empty? Yes, say, what's to happen to all of my clothes? Who's responsible for this? Me, Papa. You, why? You told me to do anything for Luigi. Yes. So I said, all your clothes don't go be a drawer. <laughs> And so, Mamma Mia, soon Uncle Pietro is going to get to his coat. Not only is he going to have a coat, but also he's going to give one to the mailman, the baker, all of his friends, and maybe even have one left for the goat. <laughs> he has a big bundle of clothes coming, Mamma Mia. Twenty-three. One favor I'm like to ask you. You see, Mamma Mia, winters are they very cold here in Chicago. <laughs> so if Uncle Pietro can spare one of his coats, <laughs> please, he should send the one to me. <laughs> That's right, the Pasquale can use it. <laughs> You're loving a son of Luigi Basco, the immigrant. <laughs> Be sure to listen next Tuesday at the same time over most of these stations when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco telling of his adventures in America. And this letter is one of the most important he has ever written. Because after being in America for over a year, Luigi gets his first citizenship paper. So be with us next Tuesday when Luigi tells about this thrilling experience to his mama Basco in it. Life of Luigi is a Sky Howard production written by Max Van Offen, Lou Demon, and directed by Max Van Offen. Stars Jake Carroll Myers as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed and Fitzcarraldi. This is CBS for Columbia Broadcasting.